Hello ladies and gents and welcome to part two. I had to start again with this one after my life was nearly cruelly snatched away from me by what sounded like the Battle of Trafalgar underneath my bedroom window. What she'll say is um, some enthusiastic Asian people, a lot of fireworks and a bucket of dirt. She'll say no more. In the words of Queen Victoria, my heart was quite going. It certainly was after that. But St Margaret Patton's Church a guild church, the worshipful company of pattern makers and the worshipful company of basket makers worship here. This video, the part two, is part carol service and you're going to get the mystery at the end of the video, the Engsy mystery. Remember our citizen Garbler, the spice cleaner in part one and at Engsy? I was privileged enough to be able to solve this mystery with, uh, with help. I wasn't, I, I had help with this one from a friend of mine. I emailed a few history friends, one of whom, Roger, is a church warden at St Bartholomew's, and uh, he got back in touch with me. He knows a lot about Scottish history. He's got Scottish roots, you see. And through an obscure Scottish document, he was able to discover that Engsy is Engsy House in Scotland, but you'll see that at the end of the video. It gets with, with a document, not the house. That's long gone. But yeah, when I was able to solve this mystery, go back into the church and uh, tell the church warden she was well chuffed. So that was something nice. And St Margaret Patton's Church isn't just a church. It's a little bit of a museum as well, as we saw in part one. The worshipful company of pattern makers whose stained glass and coat of arms we see here. I couldn't resist showing these two objects from the museum which are the pair of ladies' shoes and patterns from 1750 to 1780. And so well preserved. Absolutely amazing to be able to go and see these things. But as you discovered in part one, I arrived during the middle of a church service, which turned out to be the Christmas carol service for the worshipful company of pattern makers and basket makers. Now, only members can attend the service, but was very kindly allowed to stand in the area where the museum bit is and take an audio recording. There were um, ushers or wardens, I don't know what they were, I think they were church wardens. Um, as I say, non-members couldn't attend the service and it was more or less halfway through anyway. But I was able to stand there and they really kindly allowed me to take an audio recording. So that in a minute is what you're going to hear set to pictures, of course, of the church of st margaret patterns a beautiful church and we captured it in christmas mode so i hope you're going to enjoy
Well, I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. It was lovely to listen to. And now on to our Engsy mystery, where you'll join me and the church warden back at the grave, and then you'll join me for the document that Geoffrey sent me. So I hope you've all enjoyed. Join me for the next part. And here we are, the grave of James Donaldson, our citizen garbler and merchant of London, born in the Engsy in Scotland. Now you'll join me and the church warden earlier back in the church when she was telling me about this grave. And then after that you'll join me for the document that my friend kindly sent me, which solves the mystery. So, off we go for that. It's obviously quite prosperous. With a, it's very beautiful. Um, and uh, what's fascinating, there's two things that's fascinating. Um, so he was actually Scottish. All right. And this is before the Act of Union. So Scotland was a completely foreign country. And I, he comes from the Engsy in Scotland. Nobody yet, anybody coming in, nobody's been able to say yeah, well, what the Engsy was. was. Mm. Never heard of it before. No. Um, and he was, um, he was a member of the uh, company of weavers. But he was a city garbler. And um, you know the phrase, a garbled message, all mixed up. Yeah. Garblers were, um, it was like almost paying another tax when you imported spices. And when they first started importing them, they'd be a bit of a mess. You know, they'd have soil and other bits of detritus in with the spices. And the garbler's job was to sift the spices and get rid of the rubbish, for which you paid a fee mm. on everything that you imported. But as time went on, of course, the quality of the product got better and better. And in the end, the garblers were just opening a bag and saying, oh yes, that's nutmeg, can I have my fee please? So they actually had to bring in an act of legislation to stop oh. the garblers basically just, you know, money for... Yeah, nothing. just, just rinsing um, people, it, basically. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, that's, yeah. in, that's fascinating. Oh, never, that's interesting. No, I'd never oh, heard of that. I photographed them and I... I'm glad you told me about that, because yeah. normally I'd have a look at home. So, yeah, 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 yeah I'm yeah. brilliant. Oh, thank um, you. And, and, you know, and what's sort of sobering is that you know, it's a beautiful grave, but at the, right at the bottom, it mentions his son, who's also, um, well, I don't know, buried, but um, 11 years old. Mm. It's so common back then, wasn't yeah, it? Child yeah. mortality yeah. was lethal. Oh, yeah, Absolutely yeah. lethal, especially in the cities. I know, and what's interesting also, we've got some... And now for the solving of our Engsy mystery, and thanks to one of my history friends for sending me this, it's the National Library of Scotland, Bannertine Club, History of the Troubles and Memorable Transactions in Scotland and England. It's from 1624 to 1645. So we're back in the time of our man, Mr Donaldson's parents slash grandparents. Now, if you go to the page here, the yellow one, in Scotland and England. Now, if we go down to the second paragraph, just here, the Marquess writes home to his bailiffs that none of his bounds for, should receipt of any broken men, while I've made highly offended with pistols at Robert Gordon, bailiff of the Engsy house, and fine went their way. Now you see Engsy house there, and the bailiff, Robert Gordon, that's our man's grandfather. His mother was a Gordon, obviously married into the Donaldson family, and that's the Engsy. Uh, the only word it was missing from the tombstone is the house as well. And um, thanks to Geoffrey checking up with some other documents as well. Some other things ties that family to Engsy House in Scotland, which of course no longer exists, but we were able to tie it in with this document. So I was able to go back into the church. I've sent the church warden the links for these as well, so she'll be able to tell the story from there from now on. 
So I hope you all found that little mystery interesting and the solving thereof. And now for some historical images of the church itself. And here we are with our oldest historical image I can find. I can't find any ones of the pre-Great Fire Church, but this is Wren's St. Margaret Patterns, exactly as he intended it to look. So, very late 17th century, early 18th century image, this one. This is St. Margaret Patterns when it was brand new. You can see it hasn't got its later 18th century buildings encroached on it, no coffee stall or anything like that. This is a um, early 18th century image, this one. And if you look over to the right, you can just see that the newer buildings, then newer buildings, have now encroached on the church. And over to the left, looking down Rude Lane. Oh, this is a lovely painting, this one. is Church of St. Margaret Patterns, East Cheap, the City of London, 1815, uh, by William Pearson. Eighteenth century, early nineteenth century image. This one, and you can see, really, the kind of church that we see now. Um, apart from Rude Lane, if you looked over to the left, which goes down Rude Lane, you can see the old buildings with their cranes and warehouse type things. None of that's there now, of course. But over to the left, you've got the same building that's there today. Just in the corner below it is where the coffee stall now is. This is an early 19th century painting, this one, and this shows Rude Lane looking at St. Margaret Patterns. And this is our last image. I like this one. This is um, just after the First World War. You can see the men in their straw boaters and that. And if you look just where the coffee stall nowadays would be, there's a little stall there then. I don't know what they're selling, whether it's coffee or hot chestnuts or what, I don't know. But it's nice to see that little bit of continuity, isn't it? So this picture is around 1920 and shows the view that we started off with, really, in uh, part one. So, ladies and gents, I hope you've all enjoyed. Thanks for watching and see you all on the next one.